Design of interplanetary missions using patched conics. Let's talk about how to calculate the delta V needed to reach another planet. And I will be using as my reference Charles Brown's excellent book, Spacecraft Mission Design, the second edition. Let's look at our solar system, planets that we might want to visit, in fact, have visited in many cases. Um, here's a sketch of the solar system. First of all, showing the outer planets in relative scale to uh, the orbit sizes. So you see Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and you see Pluto here, highly inclined with respect to uh, the uh, ecliptic plane of the solar system, uh, and also fairly eccentric compared to the other planets. Now if you zero in here, inside the, the orbit of Jupiter, we see the little terrestrial planets, um, <coughs> Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, it's also called the inner planets. There's some useful uh, data on these planets. Uh, we have some orbital parameters. So for all the planets, uh, we have <coughs> semi-major axis in uh, AU, astronomical units, with the Earth being the definition of one AU. We see that Mars, for example, is at 1.524. Uh, and uh, we have the circular velocities of these planets. For example, the Earth's speed around the Sun is 29.77 kilometers per second. And inclination, as I mentioned, Pluto is highly inclined at 17 degrees, but the rest of the planets are just a few degrees uh, except Mercury is a little bit uh, <coughs> bigger than the, the others, uh, 7 uh, degrees. Over in this other table, we have uh, the GM, or mu, of the planets. So for Earth, we have uh, <coughs> 398,600 uh, kilometers cubed per second squared, and the radius of the Earth of 63 uh, 78 kilometers. And here we also have the value of the mu of the sun and the ra radius of the sun. So these are useful numbers uh, that we'll be drawing off of. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about the patched conic approximation in getting a, a spacecraft from one planet to another. <clears throat> if we think about the problem uh, in general, uh, if we're launching from the Earth and in this example from uh, Charles Brown's book, we're going to Venus. Um, we have uh, three gravitating bodies. We have the Earth, the Sun, and Venus, and then we have the spacecraft, a fourth body. So in such mechanics, this is called a, a four-body problem. And that's a very, very complicated problem to have the gravity of three planets uh, affecting uh, the spacecraft. But there is a wonderful way of approximating that can be quite accurate at times called the patched conic method, where we break the problem up, or the patched conic approximation, into pieces. So here we have launch from Earth at some departure hyperbola, and uh, we, we model the effect of this trajectory as being a hyperbolic orbit uh, out to the sphere of influence of the Earth. <clears throat> uh, then we and we do not consider the gravity of the sun at this time, nor the gravity of the other planets. After leaving the sphere of the Earth, the sphere of influence of the Earth, we then assume that we're now in an elliptic orbit with respect to the sun. Most of the time it would be elliptic. So now we're only looking at the gravity of the sun and not the gravity of the Earth or the gravity of the other planet. And then when we get within the sphere of influence at arrival, uh, at our destination planet, we then effectively turn off the sun and just look at a hyperbolic arrival uh, at the vicinity of the destination planet. So this is called the patched conic approximation. It simplifies a very complicated celestial mechanics problem known as a four-body problem involving Earth, target planet, sun, and spacecraft into uh, three parts the departure phase that only considers the Earth and the spacecraft, the cruise phase that only considers the Sun and the spacecraft, and the arrival phase that only considers the target planet and the spacecraft. So 
So let's look at a highly simplified example. And by the way, we're not even going to need to know specific values for the sphere of influence. But just uh, as a uh, rough number, uh, the sphere of influence of the Earth is uh, just under 1 million kilometers, and the sphere of influence for uh, Mars and Venus are uh, about 0.5 uh, and 0.6 times a million kilometers. <clears throat> Let's calculate the delta V required from launch off the surface of the Earth to arrival at another planet. And in this case, we'll use surface of the Earth to the surface of Mars. We'll assume a Hohmann transfer is used for the interplanetary cruise phase. So here we have a sketch. Uh, the Sun, and here I have an inertial frame, I1, I2. We have the uh, orbit of the Earth, where the uh, velocity of the Earth about the Sun I express as V, superscript I meaning the inertial speed, uh, and S to E means Earth with respect to the Sun. This is our nomenclature uh, or notation that we'll be using to indicate there are always inertial velocities. Uh, and uh, we're going to add this velocity vector, uh, V, from uh, the Earth to the probe, in other words, probe speed. I'm using P for spacecraft. We can't use S for spacecraft because we're always using, we're also using S. We're already using S for Sun. So we have E, uh, P with respect to E, that's what this means. The velocity of the probe with respect to the Earth. And then this travels along the Hohmann transfer um, only under the influence of the Sun until we get into the sphere of influence of Mars. And we now uh, are looking at the velocity of Mars with respect to the Sun, that is from Sun to Mars, and so we read that. And then we'll calculate later on what we need to do when we get there. So the, this is our nomenclature, uh, what, what all these symbols mean. And what we want to know is how do we calculate this guy, first of all, the velocity of the probe with respect to the Earth. Our modeling assumptions are Newtonian gravity, impulsive delta V, which means the delta V doesn't take any significant time to perform, uh, circular coplanar orbits for Earth and Mars, although we do know that Mars has a slightly inclined orbit with respect to the Earth, and so in more detailed calculations we have to take that into account. So here's our Hohmann transfer orbit going from the Earth out to Mars, and the radius from the Sun to um, the probe is given here, RSP, at time E, at the time of uh, at Earth. And then the radius from the Sun to the probe when we get to Mars is this value. And this velocity of the probe with respect to the Sun is the velocity of the Earth with respect to the Sun uh, plus the velocity of the probe with respect to the Earth. Now you see the value of these symbols. We have S to E, and we have E to P that takes us from S to P. We'll use TM to mean the time of approaching Mars. Well, this is just a Hohmann transfer. The equation for the uh, delta V1 for the Hohmann transfer is square root of mu over R1 times the quantity square root of 2R2 over R2 plus R1 minus 1. And that is exactly the same thing as the magnitude of the velocity of the probe with respect to the Earth.